Hello fellow Scratchers! This is episode 5 of our amazing tutorial, Coding a Zelda-style RPG in Scratch. And today we are covering some awesome topics! Split-screen scrolling. Drawing two independent scrolling areas in a Scratch project is tricky, without leaving that thick border between them. To get around this, we'd need Scratch support clip regions. And it doesn't. But if we limit the palette tiles to scroll a tile at a time, then we can get around this issue. Next we'll add keyboard control over the scrolling of the tile palette. But rather than having yet another set of controls for both the level and the palette, we'll use the mouse cursor to capture the editor focus. When the mouse is over the left, the keys control the level. But when the mouse is over the right, the palette, the keys control that instead. Very efficient. And finally, I'm super excited about this one, Sprite Sheet Tracing, where holding down the space key locks the movement of the editor and the palette cursors, moving them in unison and allowing us to easily trace large multi-costume structures into our maps. That's cool, right? So stay tuned to the end for that. What are we waiting for, guys? Let's get scratching! We begin with our projects from episode 4, and as always, take the time to save your project as a new copy, for this is RPG episode 5. Right, let's get this right hand palette scrolling. Click into the tile sprite. Just like how we have a CAMX and Y for scrolling the main game map, now we need similar variables for the palette. Make a new variable, palette dx, for this sprite only. And while we're at it, make it into a slider on the stage. Then create another variable, palette dy, for this sprite only, and make it a slider too. We'll start by making the palette slide to the right. The palette drawing code is called from here, the paint palette. So find that custom block. And yeah, we begin painting tile number 20. Set GDIX to 20 here. To scroll it right, we just add palette DX to this. Make sure the project is running. And yeah, that was easy. So what about the palette DY? We'll need to add that to the GIDX again, but as with all grid lists to move up and down, we must multiply the Y, palette DY, by the number of tiles in a row. And for this palette, that is 18. Okay, so sum that all together. And success! We finally have access to all those nice costumes. What fun! And there's so many. Hey look, here's a nice bed. Anyway, you get the general idea. Now to make the panel scroll using the keyboard. The main game world is controlled using the curse keys, or WSD. But if we are clever, detecting which side of the screen the mouse is over, we could switch the same keys to scroll the right hand tile palette too. We just need to know which side has the focus. Right, scroll over to the when I receive paint background. We'll make a new variable, focus palette, for this sprite only. And before we check if we are in the editor, set focus palette to the empty value. But then, when we begin painting the editor, here, I'm using Scratch Add-ons DevTools extension to quickly jump to the custom block. Paint palette. We can add an if block after setting the palette width and check whether mouse X is greater than 240. That's the right edge of the screen. Subtract the palette width. Great, we know the mouse is over the tile panel, so make a new custom block, naming it scroll panel. Run without screen refresh and drop that into the new if. For starters, let's just set focus palette to 1. Then let's quickly test this is working fine, and as I hover over the tile palette, 
the focus variable toggles to 1. Brilliant, so click into the player sprite, and we'll use this to disable the player motion. We'll find this in the when I receive tick player script. We have a joy x and joy y variable to represent our controls, but do you notice how we don't move the player unless joy dist is greater than 0? We can use this fact. Come into the player controls custom block, and where we set joy dist, surround it with an if else block, with an equals comparator, and we want the value of our new focus palette variable, so using the sensing thing of thing block for the tile sprite, select the focus palette variable, and we compare it to the empty value. Great, so when the focus palette is not set, we continue as normal setting the joy dist. But if the focus palette is set, just set joy dist to nothing. That will disable the player movement. We can test that out and confirm that as soon as the mouse is over the editor tile palette, the player can no longer be moved with the keyboard. That works perfectly. Great work. Click back into the tile sprite, and we'll activate the keys to scroll this area instead. Drag in a change palette dx by, and we need that joy x variable from the player sprite. So use that sensing thing of thing block again with the player sprite and choose joy x. We can drop that right in here and give that a test. With the mouse over the palette, Wow, this scrolls really fast. Too fast. Anyhow, it works. And when the mouse is over the game, that scrolls instead. That's really cool. I love that. Now, we code the up and down scrolling too. This time, we need a change palette dy. And of course, changing the joy y. However, be careful here because you'll find that scrolling is inverted. Scrolling up in the game scrolls us down in the palette with the same key. Why is that? Because we began drawing the tiles in the palette from the top and we work down, but the level starts at the bottom and works up. Typical. Anyhow, we just need to invert this movement by subtracting joy y from zero. And now, ah, sweet order is restored. Cool. But aren't we scrolling up a bit too far? It should most certainly stop when we hit the top of the palette tiles. We need to fence it in. <laughs> You've seen this all before. If palette dx is less than zero, then set palette dx to zero. And now the palette cannot go further left than zero. Do the same for palette dy. Setting dy back to 0. That sorts us scrolling past the top of the costumes. Next up, the far extents, the right and down. If palette dx is greater than, and then we need to subtract, and I have 18 tiles in each row, so pop that in there, and we subtract from that the palette width of 5 tiles. If we exceed this, we set the palette dx back to, yeah, the same value, 18 subtract 5. Now we are restricted from scrolling too far to the right. Perfect. One more to go. If palette dy is greater than, and set palette dy, you know, the value to use, just enter 19. That's the right values for my tile set you can scroll down and check the current palette dy to find the best values for you. And this one seems great for me right now. We'll address this more though later on. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good that we're nicely fenced in and can see all the tiles. What I don't like is that the panel scrolls so fast. There are so many ways I could fix this, but to be more generally useful, I'll add a tick timer into the player sprite. So click into there now. Then make a variable named tick, this time for all sprites. We'll set it to zero in the green flag script. And then 
when I receive tick player, we change tick by one. That will now serve as a quick reference to how many game ticks have passed since the project started. And if we click back into the tiles sprite, we can add an if clause after setting the focus palette to one and check this tick variable. I want to only allow scrolling every other tick. Use a greater than and a mod block. If we mod tick by two, then it will cycle between zero and one each game frame. So if it's greater than zero, then we can stop this script and that prevents it running every other frame. That should slow it down by half. Let's give that a test. There we go. So what do you think of the speed? I'd say that's just about right. Now before we move on, hide all those variable reporter variables to clear the clutter. So guys, we can happily access any tile from our palette and begin laying them down into the game. But the process of building up large multi-tile assets like this house is rather time consuming. This is where we need to bring out the big guns and implement the uber cool tile tracing feature. Yeah, how this works is as soon as we press the space key, we record the current grid position of the mouse on the map. We'll call this drag X and drag Y. Then when the mouse moves in any direction, we can detect how far it moved and replicate that relative movement in the tile palette. And ta-da, we have our newly selected brush. We can then update drag X and drag Y to the new position and repeat the process again. This shouldn't be so hard, right? So let's begin by finding the define paint editor script. This is where we are calculating the grid tile the mouse is over. GX, GY, and also GIDX too. Separate these off and we'll put these in a new custom block naming it Calculate Brush Position and run without screen refresh. Those three set blocks can go in there and drop the new Calculate block where that came from. The start of the drag begins when the space key is pressed, if else. Checking for the space key. Okay, to record the drag start position, we make two new variables. Drag X, for this sprite only, and drag Y, also for this sprite only. Then set drag X to the current grid X of the mouse, that's GX, and likewise drag Y to GY. Then when the space key is not pressed, we reset these variables, setting them both to the empty value. Cool, if we run that, you should find that when we hold down space, we get the grid position appearing in the drag X and Y variable reporters here. And when you release the space key, the values disappear. Perfect. So now we want to look for changes in drag positions. Bring in an if block, putting it before the set drag X and Y right at the top here. And we check if drag X is greater than the empty value. So if we look at this, the first time you press down the space key, the drag X will be empty. And so all we do is skip this if and set the drag X and Y variables. But the next tick of our game, we come in here again and we are still holding down the space key. So drag X and Y will now have been set to the previous grid position. But GX and GY are the current grid positions now. They might have changed. So if these are different, then we can move our palette selection by the same difference. So change brush, that's our selected palette costume, by the difference between drag X and GX. That is GX subtract drag X. Now that is simple, right? That can't possibly work, can it? Let's give it a shot. First off, we hold down space and try moving the mouse left and right. And wow, would you look at that? It really was that simple. 
Now try holding space and then clicking the mouse down to paint the tiles too. Yeah, that is beautiful. I love that. Of course, since we didn't yet include that drag Y, this doesn't yet work for up and down. Let's do that next. Duplicate the change brush, only switch the GX for a GY, and the drag X for a drag Y. That's not quite all though, as you might expect every vertical movement in the grid space needs multiplying by the grid width, or in this case the palette width. And that is negative 18. Mustn't forget that palette is flipped. Giving that a test now. And that is looking sweet. Let's try that on a large house now. Oh yes, very cool. What else can we try? How about a tree? I'll just plonk it down by this pathway. Ah, okay, so that is so cool. But did you see how the tree has replaced the nice edge of this path? Why is that? Because we still can only place one tile in each grid cell. Well, one tile and the background grass anyway. To fix this, we will need to extend our tile engine further to support layers of tiles. But rather than rushing into this now, let's draw things to a close here, and we can look forward to adding the tile layering in a very exciting episode 6. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please click the like button to show your appreciation, and that means a lot as it helps my video to be seen by more people. And the more people that can see them, the more videos I can make. Also, do subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the next exciting video, and if you want to catch these videos in early access then you can join the channel membership, with many perks like priority replies to comments, and all sorts. Check it out. But that's all we've got time for today, so have a great week ahead, and scratch on guys.